subject is really important to our work. It's telling a part of our story. You know, that will at least get us started in thinking about how this moth is going to relate to the way that it will be worn and mm -hmm. how we would see it too. When we begin thinking about a piece, Dave and I see things almost identically. We're layering and layering and layering. It's like a dance, really, of our hands as we manipulate the vocabulary that we use. The part that I love so much is when we take our found object, like this beautiful antique moth, and then we set it into the position, and it's like, oh, that's it. The found objects that we collect not only are bottle caps and little mementos that humans have created, but nature offers the most bountiful collection. The stones we find, even the littlest tiny seed pod may be part of a piece, and eventually they'll find their way into one of our pieces. We don't bring anything into our archive here unless there's a relationship we formed with it so that we know it will connect to someone else. When someone looks at a piece, they may say, oh, that's the little charm my mother had on her charm bracelet. There was a connection there. It takes someone back to a memory. It opens up a wonderful dialogue and a wonderful connection we feel with that person that we facilitated that. There's oh, some just... more cyclamen. It's such a perfect heart. Yeah, isn't that amazing? My epiphany happened when I was very young. I was born in the Pilsen area of Chicago. Where we grew up, there wasn't even grass. There was nothing. I mean, I would go outside and we would just sit on the steps and that was our play area. And as a little girl, there weren't any insects. There wasn't the smell. One day, it changed because my dad surprised us and he had built a house out in the suburbs and I heard birds for the first time. I had never experienced that. So that's why I get so emotional talking about it because it brings back that day for me that was so beautiful. And in that moment, it opened up my spirit. I just began to draw with the twigs and the insects and little miniature dolls. And that was the moment I think I became an artist. It was so fortunate for me that Roberta and I met when we were freshmen and we were 18. 18 years old. Yeah, 18. I was so naive that uh, I would go past the pottery studio at the university and I thought it was an archaeology lab. I said, looks like you can go out and dig these pieces of pottery up. And she said, no, this is a ceramics class where the students are making these things. And I thought, no way. We signed up for the class the next semester together. She kind of led me along. and It was one of those epiphanies that you can make things that are wonderful. It just opened my eyes to a world I didn't know existed. With our students, we're always talking about having integrity in the ideas that you want to manifest in the work. Each of us have a story that is really important to tell. Our stories are all different, but it's all the same message, really, because we're all so connected. These students are at a place that we're beginning to open the door. My grandmother lived in Ukraine in the 30s and through the war, and she walked through a number of countries to get out, and one of the places that they ended up staying when they were traveling was an old bombed-out barn, and the only thing that was there was this old icon. And so, she carried this with her all her life, and it was always in her room. Is this the This is the icon. Oh yeah. my gosh, what a treasure. 
they're going to go home. They're going to begin thinking about the things we talked about and feeling a real bond with the other students. That's where a lot of growth will happen. It's when you can't fall asleep at night. You're thinking of that story maybe 50 times at night, and in your head, you begin forming what you're going to do. You know, that's not bad. I no. think that's doable. Our workbench is a big table, and there's some things that Roberta likes to do more than me. We found our mm -hmm. own niche. Dave's the master solderer. He loves that process. It's really difficult to get a career going as a craftsman or as an artist, especially in the times that we're living right now. We market our work by attending three or four retail craft shows around the country, the Philadelphia Museum of Art craft show, Smithsonian craft shows in Washington, D.C., the American Craft Exposition in Evanston, Illinois. And there's just a couple fine craft galleries that we've had a long relationship with. And then there's some commission work. We do wedding rings for people, brooches, necklaces. We like to say that it's the two personalities, but there's the third person that's the blend that is the one that really creates the work. 